When you touch, taste, see, smell, or hear something, the information from that outside stimuli, for example, petting a cat, is sent to your brain to be processed. That's part of your nervous system. Free nerve endings extended into your epidermis detect forces that detect tiny pieces of tissue. That is interpreted by your brain to determine what it is and how you should respond. This processing of information is a part of your central nervous system, or CNS. When your CNS determines that the object you're seeing and feeling is a cat and you decide to pick it up, you use your somatic nervous system to send messages to your skeletal muscles to contract so you can pick up the animal. The somatic nervous system works with your motor skills to control parts of your body that move voluntarily, like your arms and legs. When your body does something involuntarily, or not directly controlled by a thought process, it's controlled by your autonomic nervous system, or ANS. The ANS has two divisions, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system prepares your body for an emergency situation using fight-or-flight responses. When you picked up your cat, their heart rate and blood pressure probably rose as their body tried to supply blood flow for the brain, heart, and muscles. As blood flow increases for those areas, it's decreased from the skin and GI tract, which is probably why you've heard not to pick up your pet after he or she eats. As you and your cat sit on the couch, your parasympathetic nervous systems will take over. This is also referred to as the resting and digesting system. Your heart rate is decreased and your body stimulates digestion. If your ANS isn't functioning properly, your body may get these two divisions confused, causing fight-or-flight responses during times you should be resting and digesting. In patients with dysautonomia, this happens on a daily basis. Their autonomic nervous systems are unable to digest food, regulate breathing patterns, and maintain steady heart rates and blood pressures. For example, when a normal person stands, their body compensates their change in position by contracting blood vessels and slightly increasing their heart rate. But when a patient with dysautonomia stands, it elicits a sympathetic response. Their heart rate rises more than 30 beats per minute. Blood pools in the lower extremities instead of flowing back up to the brain. This lack of blood flow may cause dizziness, and in many cases, the patient will experience syncope. These patients rely on medications to regulate their heart rate and blood pressure. Many dysautonomia patients experience digestive disorders. When in a fight-or-flight response, the body reduces blood flow to the GI tract. When this happens, a patient could experience nausea. If poor circulation causes too much blood in the intestines, the body will attempt to digest food that isn't really there, which can cause pain. In some patients, the nerves to one or more of the digestive organs don't function at all. This is often referred to as dysmotility. In patients with gastroparesis, the stomach doesn't empty properly, either delayed or not at all. These patients rely on medication to make the stomach muscles digest their food. Some people have an electric stimulator placed to remind their stomach to contract. In severe cases, patients may require a feeding tube or TPN to bypass the affected organ altogether. Just to recap, your ANS controls the parts of your body that you don't have to think about. It has two parts, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic controls emergency fight-or-flight responses. Parasympathetic controls resting and digesting functions. Dysautonomia occurs when your ANS does not function properly, causing temperature imbalance, heart rate and blood pressure issues, and digestive problems.